Hey there, and thanks for joining us for The Weekly Grind, a podcast where we work out the topics that shape and influence the culture, community, and church of today from a biblical perspective. My name is Ben, here with my pastor and good friendship. He's the lead pastor, and I'm the worship pastor at the Napoleon Church of the Nazarene. Today on the podcast, we want to talk about something that, that we are both passionate about and excited about, and it's the idea of mentoring. Uh, what does it mean to be a mentor, and, and, and how do we go about doing that? You know, we live in a world today where um, there's just a vast need for mentors. And so we just want to talk a little bit about that. This is The Weekly Grind. All right. Well, today should be a fun episode for us. I know it is for me because we're talking about something that we're both extremely passionate about and something that really stirs us emotionally. I think it's because of our own experience, right? Yeah. Um, It's near to us and we would love to see this be a normal thing. Mm-hmm. It's a highlight from our life. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think it's something we've wanted to talk about for a little bit. Thinking through the kingdom, mm-hmm. right? A kingdom perspective, a biblical yeah. perspective. This is a, a part of that yeah. that could make a huge difference uh, when you think through individual lives yeah. that then make up the kingdom. The church, right? Yeah, and while you don't maybe see it at the time, as I look back on my life, I can see just just a remarkable growth um, personally, spiritually, uh, and, and when I when I look back at this, and it's the it's the the value of mentoring. Yeah, and so we want to talk about mentoring today and what that looks like, um, what the what the biblical role of mentoring looks like. Um, uh, we, we use it in another word, a lot of times discipleship, discipling. Right. Um, and I think if we're, if we're intentional on certain things, then it is discipling and, um, and just the, the fruit of that is, is, is a powerful thing. Yeah. I think uh, like all the, they do these studies, numbers bear out, mm-hmm. um, young adults, especially, mm-hmm. but even at my age, I still have this desire, but young adults, especially, there's a high rate or a high number percentage of young adults that, that would really love to have someone older or someone more experienced come alongside them and help them navigate through life. Someone that they can gain wisdom from, watch them go through stuff. Uh, I, I've read before studies that like 70% of young adults in our churches would love to have, in essence, a mentor. Mm-hmm. And I grew up with this old phrase, uh, more is caught than taught. Yeah. Right? You can talk all day about what should happen, but the most outstanding lessons that I ever learned was when I observed somebody live out truth. Mm -hmm. Um, The Bible... I mean, think about, even in the Old Testament, you have, you know, kind of this Moses and Joshua, to me, is one of the first major mentoring situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's obvious Moses helped Joshua get ready. Mm -hmm. That was a pivotal point in the children of Israel's... Yeah, in setting the foundation of, of them moving beyond Moses and what he was called to do. And going into the promised land. Yeah. Leading them through that, right? I mean, you got like you got uh, you got Samuel uh, mentoring Saul. That didn't work out, but he mentored David. Mm-hmm. You've got Elijah and Elisha. You, you've got these yeah. examples through the Old Testament. What's cool to me is the the New Testament. You, you have like uh, you have Priscilla and Aquila with Apollos. You have Paul with Titus, yeah. Timothy, right? Mm-hmm. And then Timothy with Epaphras, yeah. all these. But it's what's the main illustration of mentoring? Yeah, it's it's Jesus Christ Himself, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and what is more us caught to... than taught? Yeah, and His seeing... approach was: you guys follow me. Yeah, watch me as I teach, but watch me as I live. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say: is <clears throat> seeing Christ lived out in their lives. Absolutely. And and then being able to witness that and to see that practically, like you said, catching he that. He models 
it's like the the prototype for what exists in the kingdom mm-hmm. is coming alongside and not just teaching but modeling mentoring uh those who are <clears throat> you know more young in the faith and mature some of that's the same age can happen a lot of times it's it's maybe a generation or two ahead um, the scriptures talk about older men their role young older uh, women their role what yeah. is that all coming down to it's this idea that you and I do so much better when not only do we know what we're supposed to do but we watched it we watch it being lived out yeah and we follow that we then have a sense of this is how it, it goes. Mm-hmm. And I know for you and I, it's been personal, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely been personal. I can um, I can look back and um, there's a mentor of mine when I was out in Colorado that that really um, he he taught me a lot about what it, what it looks like to mentor. But one of the things that I there that I was thinking thinking in that the other day is I pursued that. That was something that I I wanted. Mm-hmm. And so I was, I was highly committed to pursuing that type of relationship and he was willing to, um, engage in that. And, um, you know, my takeaway in that is that, uh, he invited me into all areas of his life. So he was a pastor as well that we met at the church and I, I kind of went with the intent of wanting to, wanting to become a better leader and a better pastor, but what I ended up getting was so much more than that because he invited me into his home. He invited me into his life, some of the personal things that he was dealing with. He didn't, he didn't need to seem polished. He didn't need to, he was, he was just real and vulnerable. Yeah. And, and that was just, it was so remarkable to me. And I just gained such a high respect for him. And, and, and he really taught me a lot about what it, what it means to, um, you know, to be a leader and, and, and really cause me to want to do that and to pass that on to somebody else. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that I look back and, um, yeah, he's just, he's the best in my eyes just because of the time that he took. Would you say too, he also like model how to be a godly man? He did. And, uh, is yeah. he married? Yeah, he's married. He's, so kinda, he's got four. Get, he had three kids at the time. So and husband and father, yeah. you're seeing it. How to balance out. that. And he really taught me balance, especially in ministry, because in our context, uh, it can be weird hours. Mm-hmm. And um, really uh, how, to, how to live in a household that is a sending household. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, yeah, being... Um, being a loving husband, mm-hmm. letting, I mean, that, that is, that was his primary responsibility, right? He's a father and he's a husband. Mm-hmm. And that is, that is a more important job than any occupation yes. that you can have mm-hmm. because you're the only one that can fulfill that. Mm-hmm. And it's out of that, that, that we are, that we are propelled into our occupations and the things that we do. Yeah. And, and he really, he brought me in to what it looks like to, he, he's crazy about his wife and he's crazy about his kids and, um, yeah, so that it, it really taught me a lot about balance and about setting limitations on, on other areas of my life to make sure that, that my household is in order and to keep that in order first. And it gives you a, uh, a, a goal yeah, or an expectation. Something to aspire to. That when you're making decisions, you make those decisions in light of what you know is possible mm-hmm. because you've seen it lived out and you don't sell out. Yeah. Right, like yeah. you don't sell yourself short because somebody has provided an example ahead of you that wow, this is what I want, and for this to happen, this decision would sell me short of that. It's short sighted, or it's not. Yeah. You know, I think there's so many uh, scenarios where this plays out in our day to day life yeah. and who we become. Yeah, for it's, me, it was the same. It was in college. Yeah, um, it was honestly a professor who just modeled um, this kind of uh, attitude of I'm teaching all this stuff that they need to, to know, but I'm willing to be vulnerable and transparent 
and open about my personal life because I want these guys to get it holistically. I don't want them to walk out of here just knowing how to exegete the Bible and the right hermeneutical approach or all these technical things, right? Mm -hmm. I want them to know what it is to be a man of God. Yeah. And he he opened his life up. It was incredible. I mean, it, it really, for me, helped me in so many ways. And he was a mentor. I see Jesus doing that. I see Paul doing that. And then beyond that, Timothy did that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's always been a understanding that the kingdom should be the place where mentoring absolutely, absolutely is always happening and it's leading the way. Yeah. I mean, think about like even the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. What are they wanting so bad? Yeah. Mentors. There's these mentors, yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if the kingdom was just full of this idea where even the world looked on and say, wow, that's the way it should be. Yeah, and it's okay for it to, I mean, it's it's supposed to be messy and organic. It doesn't have sure. to be structured. It doesn't have to be, yep, we're going to meet 6 a.m. coffee and we're going to go over this this passage of scripture and, and study it. No, it's not, it's so much more than that. Sure. It's 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 really fourfold is is kind of how I've learned to understand it. You have um, inviting them into uh, your personal life, mm -hmm. like we talked about, uh, your family life, mm -hmm. I think, and and uh, inviting them into your church life, mm -hmm. and then um, and then your work life, and and allowing them to see these as as a as just the personal things that you deal with, how you, how you interact with your wife and how you interact with your children, how you serve at church, and then how you go about uh, your work and the mm -hmm. way that you live your life uh, in that environment. And just inviting them along in the process is, is so powerful. I think I was at a, a conference, uh, Grant Skelton mm -hmm. talked about this. He's kind of a leading millennial voice. Yeah. And his deal was like, man, this is one of the primary ways yeah. that millennials, Gen Z, all these are going to grab a hold of the faith. Yeah. It's not going to be like a textbook or a book or yeah. it's going to be you inviting them to walk life with you. Cuz these two demographics, <laughs> they're uh, I don't even know the statistics on how many are not married and don't have families, but so many of them aspire to one day. Sure. And the more that um older men can bring them in and to show them what an ideal family situation, a biblical home looks like, mm -hmm. because Grant will tell you, I mean, he's, um, he didn't, he doesn't have a, uh, a biblical earthly father. He doesn't have. And so th the mentor that impacted him in his life was, uh, was some, it was just, it was just a mentor of his and showed him things that he now aspires to have. I know we talk about it. Obviously, we're males here, so we're talking through it. I think the same is is true oh, yeah. with women. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, it was cool is for me, I think back through, I grew up in a church environment. And obviously, your parents, your father, uh, for us, a mom, for a lady, uh, should be a primary mentor, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a need yeah. that not only is my parent a mentor, but there were godly men in the church who mentored me in different ways. Mm -hmm. They just showed me. Uh, they invited me into certain space of their life where I got to observe and ca catch, yeah. right? Like, wow, this is, this is what it means to be uh, a godly man, Yeah, how I interact. I just looked at that, and I'm so yeah. appreciative of having that kind of culture come alongside it. Sure, my dad is a mentor. Yeah. Right? But it just seems like that we need, or always in need of, more voices, yeah. more examples than just our parents. Yeah. And and one thing I just, as you were talking, I had thought of, and I think my experience drives a lot of this, but uh, the idea of shooting the gap. So for, like, obviously my dad was a mentor to me. You are in the middle of my dad and me, okay? Well, I, I look up to you, and I, I look to you because you are, 
you're raising four kids. I'm closer to your season than I am my dad's. Yeah. And there's 10 years between us where there's 20 between my dad and I. Yeah. And finding that person in the gap, because again, that's, that's a good point. Greg, that's, yeah. that's where he was, is he's mm-hmm. your age. Yeah. And it was somebody that, hey, it's that next it's, it's that next 10 years. What, what do I, what do I want yeah. it to look like? And what is he going through that I need to start thinking about now? Yeah. And it was, and, uh, so, so for me, I really look for those people now on the back end of it, I've got a son and, um, he's one and the coolest thing ever happened where, uh, I, I spent a lot of time with a young man at our church and, Again, and I, this this kind of all came came around as we were uh, working through this podcast. But um, there's 15 years between myself and him, and then 15 between him and and my son Judah. And he said, "Man, he's like, I can't wait someday to to do the things for him that you are for me right that's, now and giving me those opportunities because that's, awesome. that's what it's about. <laughs> those and are it's, the things you don't forget. No, I will yeah, never forget yeah. that. And and it, it's just it was so impactful because I'm like, yes. Like you're going to be able to show him things that and give him get uh, speak into his life a different way than and it doesn't diminish my role, yeah. but but he's going to be able to speak into him in a different way and I pray that he does you know and I, I pray that that you know works out that way. I'm just right in the middle of that. So we brought in an intern, Justin. Yeah. He's been on the podcast yeah. before. I feel like this year for me has really opened up. Uh, how I need to live this out to be a mentor, mm-hmm. right? Um, somebody that's on staff full time for a year. Um, but what's been amazing is I have a 13 year old boy, and guess who he is absolutely looking up to, who's already influencing his life. Yeah, it's Justin. Yeah, see, he's shooting that gap. Yeah, between Dad. Yeah, and, and Keegan, there's Justin. Yeah, and I know that the fruit of this year for me personally, well, I've hopefully grown as a mentor, figured out how to better do that, the importance of it. But my personal life, my son, has been encouraged in the faith by somebody who's mm-hmm. shooting that gap. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so practical. I agree, yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things that I just wanted to... You know, it's it's not it's not that hard to do. I guess maybe some encouraging thoughts mm-hmm. um, before we leave is it's really just creating space and intentionality. I just started um, working with another young man, and guess what? He just he just enjoys hanging out. Um, commitment is more important than character. In the fact that, like you said, more is caught than taught. Mm-hmm. And so I know that if he's committed to our relationship to be mentored, that the character and just becoming Christ-like and, and all the things that I, I, I pray that he experiences mm-hmm. will come if he's just committed to the process. Mm-hmm. And, and all I want him to be committed to, honestly, practically, is uh, Saturday morning. Um, he's going he's gonna to help me with some yard work, and we're just going to hang out. I've got to do the yard work anyways. I've got to organize my shed. And guess what? He he just is tickled to death that I would ask him to do that. It shows him how to work. It is how it's to get a job him, done. Yeah, work ethic and so Absolutely. many things. And for a young man who who actually he doesn't have a father in his life, and so um, you know just try just praying and hopefully being able to 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 show him and to be that for him and and again show him what that home structure looks like. Something for him to strive to that it's not his fault that he's in the situation that he is, but I can show him what there is and what he could strive for one day. Mm-hmm. And so it's, so not, Jesus it's not hard. Is, so just, Jesus is saying, follow me. Yeah. Paul is saying, follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah. It's passed on down through now the 2,000 years of this mm-hmm. kingdom, this church, and we get an opportunity to continue passing on the faith in yeah. a way, the the biblical words are example. We use words like role modeling or mentoring, like we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Such a valuable part of the kingdom. And, and I like what you said at the beginning when you talked about the mentor in Colorado. 
I willingly sought it out. He was willing to do it. I think there's a willingness that comes from both sides. Mm -hmm. Willing to mentor, willing to be mentored. Yeah. And in that, I think that our faith is strengthened. We become wiser. This thing gets healthier. Decision-making gets better. Mm -hmm. Uh, So much. Yeah. And so I think for us, our challenge today, because we are experiencing it right now, we have thought back through our past, how much mm-hmm. it's meant to us. Uh, are you willing to mentor, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you willing to mentor? Or are you willing to be mentored? Yeah. And probably right now in my life, I need. We all need both. Yeah. It's the old school. Oh, so much. Who are you discipling, and who discipling yeah. you? Yeah. This all kind of is the mix of the cake, right? Mm-hmm. How to how to bake or how to make yeah. the cake? Yeah. And um, so we're just putting it out there, a challenge. Are you mentoring anybody? Are you seeking out those opportunities? Are you seeing the value of that? And are you allowing yourself to be mentored Mm -hmm. so that you can can be the best uh, person you're supposed to be in this season of your life where you're using truth and experience to your advantage? Because no matter which side of that you're on, you're growing. That's right. That's the deal is... As a mentor, I'm constantly trying to to stay sharp. He's sharpening me, <laughs> man, and sure. he's asking me questions about things mm-hmm. um, that it's like, oh yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be thinking about these things in this moment if. And he's keeping me sharp. And on the other side of it is, you know, I'm not afraid to ask questions. And I mean, I look at you as definitely a, a mentor and informal one. I mean, we work together, but Mm -hmm. we have so, we spend so much time together that if something pops into my mind, I'm constantly, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm right into your office asking you about it. And, Mm -hmm. and so again, but my point is you, you won't be disappointed and you're, you're always going to grow in this. And it's, it's so good no matter which side that you're on. Again, back to the kingdom being a city on a hill, I think a shining, a piece of that that shines is a healthy community of people where there's plenteous role models Mm. and this is all taking place yeah the people are growing and then sharing encouraging strengthening and being there for one another yep to pray about it be a mentor